Hello everyone, welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today we're going to be talking about color. Specifically, how to tone down colors when you end up with a photo that's a bit oversaturated. So color is one of those things that's very subjective. Some people like a brighter, more saturated image and other people like a more toned down natural image. And sometimes when you go through an editing process, you get to the end and you go, you know what, maybe I took a little bit too far. Well, today I'm gonna to show you a few ways to quickly tone down certain areas of an image and tone down specific colors so you can get to the result that you want and make sure that it's exactly what you're looking for. Before we get started, I wanted to say hello to Pat and hello, Julie. And Pat has a quick question right as we start out here and wants to know if Luminar AI will be ready for Big Sur. Yes, it will. Luminar AI will be Big Sur ready when it ships and the expected release date for Luminar AI is December 15. Hey Russ, good to see you too. All right, let me go ahead and switch my screen here and we'll go ahead and get started. So today I have an image up on the screen of from one of our ambassadors and it's a beautiful, beautiful Nordic village. And I love the colors, the soft light kissing those mountains so pretty. Let me show you the original. This is my edit, this is my interpretation, but here's what I started with. So it's a little bit flat. You can see there's some color in the sky. And with a little bit of gentle editing, this is what I came to. Now for some of you, you might like it a little bit punchier. Others might like it toned down a little bit. All of that can be easily done to your taste. So I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and do that. To get started, I'm gonna go to the edit module and just scroll down to the bottom of my history and click back to our original. And then we'll go back to our template tab, templates tab and take a look at what we have there. I wanna say, let's see here, just taking a look at the comments, seeing what's going on over there. So um, we're gonna start with the for this photo section and I'm just gonna kind of quickly peruse through the options here. It gives us the option of scenery, easy landscapes and waterscapes. All of those have really good potential. For this one, I went ahead and went into scenery. That seemed like a very natural place to start. And I went to this one called Fast Fix. Now you'll see I've already marked the heart on this one. This is one of my favorite templates because it's a great starting point for editing. So let me go ahead and go ahead and click that. And you'll see immediately it brought out a ton of contrast. It really made the colors come alive and it looks really good but it's a little bit much. So let me take you up here to the visibility icon and we'll look at the before and the after. So it really depends on your taste. If you like what we've got going on here, but it's a little too much, you can always go down to the slider here at the bottom and pull back that overall amount to your taste. Now in doing that, that pulls back on all of the adjustments that were made, not just the color. So it's up to you whether or not that's where you wanna stay. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that back up at 100 because I like the contrast and other details that were pulled out with this template. It's just the color that went a little bit overboard. So I'm gonna go over to my edit tab and let me go ahead and move a little preview thing out of the way here that's in my way. Sorry about that. All right, and then we're gonna go to our essentials and we're gonna start with our color tool. So that seems like a pretty obvious place to start when you wanna adjust colors, right? All right, so I'm gonna click down into the HSL section. This first section up here, this takes care of color globally, meaning it affects every piece, every pixel in the image will get touched by those saturation and vibrance uh, sliders. Down here in the bottom, we can target individual colors on their own. So in looking at this image, we've got some magentas here that I feel are a little bit over the top. So I'm gonna go down to my magenta slider and I'm in the hue slide, the hue section right now. What I actually wanna do is click to saturation. And for those of you who don't know, give me just a second here. Sorry about that. All right, so when we go into hue, sat, the HSL, that sounds, stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. Hue is the overall color. So if I click on that and we take, say our red tones here, we can make them more pink or we can make them more orange. It changes the overall hue of that particular color. If we go into saturation, that's the amount of pigment we're throwing at something. So if we go down to our magentas, we can take that magenta up really high, or we can pull it back. And you see if I get down to the bottom there, it's starting to actually gray out some of those areas that have a strong magenta. Now let me go ahead and double click that to reset it. And in luminance, this darkens or lightens various colors. So we could darken those magentas, or lighten those magentas. Again, I'm gonna double click that to come back to center. 
and I'm going to start with my saturation. And as I said, what looks a little bit over the top to me are these magentas. So I'm going to go down to my magenta slider and just ever so slightly pull back on that. I don't want to pull it so far as it becomes kind of gray in those areas. I don't want to lose saturation entirely. I just want to pull it back a little bit. And looking at this here, we can probably also pull back a little bit on our reds because there's a little bit of red tone here mixed in with the magenta. And our blues up here are really, really saturated. So we can pull that back just a tiny bit. So now let's go ahead and see before and after our adjustments there in the color tool. So I think we're on a good path here. It's looking pretty good. The next thing I wanna do is work with the light. And so I'm gonna go to our light tool and play a little bit with our white balance. Since we're looking at a snowy photo, this, it's got a very cold feel to it, but the light has a warmth to it. So to cool it down and really emphasize that it's a very cold day, I'm actually gonna pull my temperature slider ever so slightly to the left and cool off the entire image. And that just takes some of those tones and makes them a little bit cooler and more blue. So that looks really good, but I feel like it kind of pulled away from the warmth of the light. So to compensate, I'm gonna go ahead and go down to my landscape tool. And we already have a little bit of golden hour applied, but I'm gonna pull that up ever so slightly more. And that's just gonna warm up the quality of the light. So we can pull that up just until you're about happy with it. And it does make those pinks come out a little bit more, but we're gonna adjust that here in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and turn that back on again. And I like where that's going. I might back it off a tiny bit more. All right, so finally, now that we have our colors a little bit more toned in, we can apply a little bit of adjustment to the colors overall. So I'm gonna go back to my color tool and work with these saturation and vibrant sliders. I typically leave saturation alone because it's very heavy handed and it tends to affect every tone in the picture. Vibrance is kind of like saturation light in that affects the most saturated colors. So I'm gonna pull back on that vibrance ever so slightly just to pull the edge off of those most saturated colors. There we go. And now let's take a look at our before and our after. We've managed to bring out a lot of really beautiful color, but it's not over the top like it was initially with that template. So if we go back to our history and we go down to the bottom and we see where we started with that template, it's just a little too punchy. It's beautiful, but in my opinion and for my taste, it's just a little bit too much. You might like it this way, you might prefer it this way, and that's totally fine. Color is one of those very subjective things. The thing you wanna avoid is you want color to accentuate your subject, not necessarily be your subject. That's the big differentiating point for me. So if the color starts to draw away from what the subject is of my photo and the story my photo is trying to tell, then it's probably gone too far. Let me go ahead and take a look here at the comments and see what we've got going on. Let's see here, does Julie would like to know, does sharpening add more dimension? Um, to a point, what sharpening does is when you come in here to some of these edges, you can start, let me go ahead and pull up the sharpening tool, go to our details panel, and I'm just gonna pull that up to the top really high. You can see that all of the edges started to get almost a halo around them. So yes, it does make those, does give a depth of sorts. This is obviously far too much. So I'm gonna pull that back down and you can add just a little bit of sharpening and add a little bit more depth to the image. So there we go. Let me go ahead and turn that off and turn that back on. When you use a gentle touch with your sharpening, you're really only gonna notice it when you're zoomed into 100 or when you print it really large and you've stepped back, excuse me, and are looking at it up on the wall. Let's see what else we have here. Pat has another question about Big Sur. Will Luminar AI work fine even as a plugin, which seems to be the trouble right now with Luminar 4? As far as I know, yes, that issue will be resolved by the time Luminar AI is released. And I believe it's working now. I have not yet upgraded to Big Sur. Um, I wanna make sure everything's working properly before I do that. And just to kind of touch on that, I know for a lot of you, you've already run the update, so you're just waiting. Um, in future, for uh, major operating system updates, make sure you wait a week or two before you run those updates, just to make sure your, your software all has, all has time to catch up because even though a lot of companies put out updates, there are things that are unexpected that come up and everyone uses the software a little bit differently. So what our team might anticipate as far as the way you use the software might be different than what you use. And so conflicts can come up that we don't anticipate. So definitely give a couple of weeks after a major update before, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a tickle in my throat, 
before you upgrade that update that operating system. All right, let's see here. Sandra wants to know something about temperature sliders. Let's see, did I miss a question? Don't see it. Sandra, can you clarify what you'd like to know about the temperature sliders? Uh, let's see here. Russ says he's going to have to try using other sliders. He's just been using the saturation. Yes, definitely dig into the HSL. One of my favorite things. Let's see here. <clears throat> Julie would like to know, in this picture, what do I want to be my focal point? Well, that's a really good question. So in this image, I would say really the village is kind of the focal point. But in a landscape like this, you want to lead your viewer's eye through the image because the whole thing is the subject. You're taking in this very vast view. So I kind of see it as this line of the or the right line of the edge of the lake comes around, leads me through this village and up to this beautiful, beautiful sunset or sunrise. So I hope that makes sense. Let's see here. Pat says smart advice. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad it's appreciated. Um, just keep it in mind next time. I know it happens to a lot of us. We get excited when new stuff comes out. We want to get it right away, uh, especially with operating systems that have new functionality. But it's sometimes best to be a little bit patient with that, especially if you have software that is required for work or clients that are depending on you for pictures. You want to make sure you can deliver those things without having any software hiccups. So it's always best to be a little bit cautious with that. So that's my cautionary tale of the day. Before we go to, uh, before we sign off for today, I also want to remind you that on December 10th, we're going to be having Luminar Live. That's going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern, and we're going to have our CEO. We're going to have a keynote from Elia Lucardi. We're going to have a lot of our ambassadors doing uh, product demos and answering roundtable discussion questions. So we hope you'll tune in and join us on December 10th at 10 a.m. Eastern. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. And um, oh, actually, Julie has one more question. <laughs> Uh, how would you make the village stand out more? All right, so let's go ahead and tackle that real quick. What I would probably do is go down to my local masking here. And I haven't really shown you a whole lot of this yet because until recently, the betas that we were using didn't have this fully developed. Well, I can show it to you now. So let's go ahead and go up to add a local mask. We'll go to basic. And for this one, I want to pull up my exposure a little bit. And you'll see that's touching the whole image right now. But what I want to do is go up here to paint my mask. And I'm gonna use the bracket key on my keyboard to make my brush a bit bigger. And I'm gonna make that, that's a very soft brush. I'm gonna bring the opacity down a bit. And then I'm just gonna gently paint that in over the village to brighten that up a little bit. So that, that brings your eye a little bit closer to that. Another way you could do it is with a vignette. So we go down to our vignette tool. And if you've seen my demos before, you know that I like to do vignettes a special way. I pull the amount all the way down to negative 100. I'm gonna go ahead and make that size a bit smaller. And then I go into advanced settings, bring that feather up nice and soft. We want a nice soft transition. And I'll bring up the inner light even a little bit more. Now we can go to choose subject and place that right over our village. And then we grab our amount slider and pull that back up to the point that it looks good. So by darkening those edges, we automatically draw the viewer's eye to where the brightest part of the image is. So I'm not wanting to put a very strong vignette on there, but you can certainly do that. Go ahead and click that, and so let's see what they do on um, the before and the after. It's a very subtle way to draw your viewer's eye. So I hope that helps. Let's see here. Rave Dog says, never do a 0, .0 release, especially on a daily driver. Absolutely great advice. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this session and learned how to tone down your colors. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and say have a great rest of your afternoon, and we'll see you tomorrow. Vanelli, Vanelli and I will both be with you tomorrow and look forward to seeing you. Have a good afternoon, everyone. Bye-bye.